Today, we're gonna talk about text scouting and how it will help you figure out how to visualize your script and make it work within your location. Let's dive in. So what is a tech scout? As you know, a location scout happens when you already have picked out your place and have figured out where and when you want to shoot. I love this location and its griminess. A tech scout covers the more, well, technical aspects of a production. These include things like power, noise, base camp areas, all these things that essentially are the nitty gritty details of a production that probably should be ironed out before the day of. Oh, and bring a camera. You'll thank yourself later. For today's Tech Scout, we have a script for a short film, the continuation of The Pen, a project we already shot in our pre-production Shotless episode. Our protagonist, Jamie, wants to cover up his misdeeds by silencing the only witness to his crime, the intern. We start the chase with Jamie in hot pursuit down a long corridor, which then splits off into an elevator slash stairwell scene before they end up outside in a courtyard where we enjoy a brief 360 hero shot. The chase then continues into an abandoned restaurant for a fight scene that inadvertently ends up with the intern slipping and tumbling down the stairs to an early, sad demise. Light and fluffy stuff, right? Let's check out our first location. So what's gonna happen in this scene is we have our main character, Jamie, who's gonna be coming out around this corridor. As a director, I'm looking for how does this location reflect the character more and how do we either dress it or make it look a certain way that it fits the story that's being told, the characters that are in it, and the world that they all inhabit. From a story perspective, I do like the kind of monochromatic, industrial, hardware kind of look, because this story is essentially about a man's fight against the system. At the Location Scout, we came in with a rough idea of what we wanted. We have a storyboard, we had a shot list, now it's more about how do we actually go about executing it in the most creative, yet also most efficient way possible. That's why we have Casey, our cinematographer, Trevor, our gaffer, Chris, our sound guy, and Carrie, our first AD, and Herman, our producer, are gonna be looking for some of the more logistical details. On the Tech Scout, the big thing for me as a DP is lighting. One of the things that we're going to fall into a huge trap on is just resets and we're going to run out of time. So I really want these setups to go as fast as possible so we have more time in the day to get through the big fight scene. We keep talking about a steady cam. If we can actually start with our character looking this yeah. way, maybe we can bring in a bigger light to come through those windows. And then as he runs towards us, we backpedal nice just to make okay. him a little bit faster, a little bit more energetic. Okay. Our cinematographer will look for best available light and the equipment considerations. Then the AD will know how to schedule the shoot in the most efficient way possible. The courtyard, the courtyard as long first. as we finish it before 10, yeah. I think that's going to give that us done. the best lighting. Something important for scheduling at the Tech Scout is lighting. This particular hallway area, we're going to get sun, versus the restaurant, which it's a more controlled environment. So then that one was discussed that it could be at any time during the day, which is more convenient. And so having to line up the shots in that order. My only concern is audio. Yeah, for sound, you know, kind of getting killed next door. It seems like they've got some kind of exhaust system going there. So for this location, what I'm thinking about is how much control do we have over the location? There's a lot of buildings nearby that kind of have like HVAC systems running. You know, if we're shooting in like a little office scene, is there a copy machine that's gonna be running? Is there, you know, a fridge that might cycle through its power cycle while we're working? Can you shut some of those things off? I've only heard a couple planes so far since we've been here. Are we gonna have to dodge that on the day? Uh, it's a pretty lively space. There's gonna be a lot of reverb and things that I might not get the kind of sound I'm looking for. Are there any ways we can deaden some of that? So kind of basic things like that that I'm always thinking about and kind of, kind of listening for. As continuing from that scene, you know, our intern and his chaser, where they step into the elevator, I'd love to get a soft light up in the top. Sure. Obviously, that's going to need power. I don't feel like I see any outlets here. I haven't seen any, no. First thing I look for is, you know, where are the breakers? What are our power options? You know, how many outlets do we have? Do we have to pull it from inside the building? Do we have to run remote on batteries instead? 
One of the most important things when it comes to Gripper Electric is we need to know where our breaker boxes are and what our total wattage draw is from those boxes. So here we have 225 neutral amps. So that means that's the maximum limit wattage draw we can pull from this box. Certain lights, like a 10K, 20K, uh, draw a lot of power, um, a lot more watts. So like this box isn't capable of that. So we would actually have to find an external source for power. There are a few concerns that we do have. For example, the elevator being a little bit smaller than we thought, the corridor being a little bit more sparse, a little more sterile than we imagined it would be. Does it look like you can look down? Yeah, this is enough? one of our shots actually. Okay. So. It's pretty narrow. One of the biggest things is safety in terms of access because we have the one staircase in the elevator and if we have to block that for the shots and if anybody else needs to use the building, that's a major concern. I'm mostly concerned in terms of safety uh, with us running power in a stairwell. Yeah. There's an incredible lack of fire extinguishers I'm noticing in the entire building. I definitely think we're gonna need a stunt coordinator. If we're going down stairwells higher than six feet, SAG's gonna require it. So I think that's gonna be an additional hire that we're gonna definitely have to have here. One of the most important things you can do is figure out how to operate your set efficiently, but also safely. Let's look at our next location, a courtyard. So after that shot in the elevator and when they come on the staircase, they both come up from over here. And we kind of want to take a quick pause, I think, here to kind of see the environment. This location is particularly challenging as we're planning to do a 360 shot and it's hard to hide parts of these locations as everything will be seen. Kind of see a little bit of everything, so that's why I'm a little bit concerned. We want to make sure that we're not endorsing a company or whatever, Absolutely. or they get pissed off using their brands. So yeah. we should greek out all the company letters and all that stuff in this location. Intellectual property, such as brands, art, etc., that's a whole other topic. Before it's too late, consider any legal issues that may potentially arise. For example, the artwork on the wall. Do you have clearance for it? So as odd as it may seem, this little display here is a very real concern. If it were freestanding wood, I wouldn't be concerned because that means someone must laid it haphazardly. As it has been mounted, it's an intellectual property. So I would send pictures of this to our legal team to make sure that we can use it. Otherwise, if you shoot it without that clearance, you can't use the shot. When you're about to shoot, be sure that background doesn't adversely impact the way you're filming. If you have concerns at your tech scout, this is the time to talk about them. Now, do I need to hide base camp somehow over here? Yeah, we definitely need to like find a way for people to like scoot behind. One of the biggest things is accessibility, such as where can base camp be? In this space, we've chosen this area here as a base camp because it's rather hidden. Also, because you have sort of an escape plan right here that leads down to the parking lot, which means that anyone coming to set for drop-offs or deliveries can come up through the back way and then come straight to production, rather than going through the set where they're going to be shooting. The proximity to the bathrooms is another real consideration. It sounds flippant, but I promise it can give you a huge headache if you don't think about it on your tech scout, honestly. As you know, there are a lot of elements to production. You want to make sure that base camps are close enough to ferry people back and forth, but also not close enough that you end up disrupting principal photography. Let's move on to our final location. Okay, so the actors will be coming through this door right here. What I really like about this location is how derelict it looks. I think this is perfect for our fight scene. This is exactly what we need. Here we are in the restaurant for our climactic scene. We have some space in this location, which has pros and cons. As we get in here and G&E and DP are kind of uh, dealing with lighting stuff. Let's maybe talk about getting some quasars or kinos to put in these mirrored sections. Just so I'm going to be looking at how can I avoid my equipment getting in the shot. We've got these mirrors in the back. You know, are they going to be having really directional lights that I'm going to have to avoid? So this starts to be kind of a maze of where can my equipment live because I need to get a boom in there during the shot. I don't like relying solely on, uh, on lavaliers. Going off the storyboard itself, I know we're finding a lot more that we can add into it to kind of amp up the action, but I mean, that does bring up new problems. What do you think about maybe our character grabbing a sugar glass bottle and using that to crack the other one out of oh, this yeah, area that could be cool. into yeah, the next? Absolutely, yeah. I think we definitely set back. Having early storyboards or shot lists at your tech scout can help, but expect to make an adjustment or two. 
especially when it comes to action or stunt scenes. There's going to be fight choreography in this area. Mm. Do we have enough room? Also with that sink there, yeah. we might need to fake how they hop over. You have to find the happy medium in terms of wanting the director to still have their creative vision, but still fit within your budget and your time of that day. So we only have 30 more minutes here at the location. I think we should move on to the next yeah, one. Yeah, so let's check out our final scene and then we can uh, wrap it on the sex gap. Okay. So let's head over. We can see the action from the bar that's happening over there. So this is the very important climax of the scene where our hero and our protagonist are kind of a fight or flight kind of moment to see what he's going to do. So let's talk about the stunt scene that's going to happen. The unique elements of each scene will give you unique considerations. Be flexible. These are not problems you can't solve. I don't know what our situation on sidewalk use is, but I'd love to do something a little bit softer through these windows. The use of public streets is a little it's cost not prohibitive. A, not a permit. We've got an additional permit, we've got additional security to worry about there. And also, you have to sometimes rein them in a bit. So I have to just remind them that there are budgetary constraints. Let's think a bit more creatively. Yeah. If we can find a way to rig a mirror board over here, maybe we can shoot the Jolico from across the top and that'll be our motivation for the light streaks coming down. And we can do that in the building instead of sure. on the sidewalk. Yeah, we can do that, yeah. If it isn't in the cards from a technical standpoint, don't be discouraged. Think of solutions. Just because we call it a tech scout doesn't mean you can't get creative. So we blast it through, we put a hazer up, so get some fog, yeah, so you have like light streaking in it. Come to a compromise that best helps your story. It takes a village to shoot a film and you want to make sure that every department is synchronized and working in harmony. I think that pretty much covers it for Tech Scout. So we got everything covered and we're ready to go. To quickly recap, one of the most important aspects of a Tech Scout is establishing your level of control over the location. Don't Tech Scout by yourself. Bring your cinematographer, gaffer, the AD, producer, sound mixer, and of course, your director, like yours truly. So we have this cool little 360 shot. I think that works. Yeah, I think we can use steady cam. I think that. Remember to visualize how the scene will play out. Look at the natural lighting. Listen for any sound complications. Figure out the power requirements. Find areas to stage equipment and background actors that won't get in the way. Oh, and get your location agreement in writing. Don't worry if you don't remember everything we've went through in this video. Check the description below to download and print out our official Tech Scout cheat sheet so you can take it with you next time to your next location. Filmmakers, are you looking for your next film location? Check out Rappel. We're an online marketplace that connects filmmakers to film locations. Pair with StudioBinder's production management software to break down your script into elements, locations, create shooting schedules, shot lists, storyboards, and when you're ready, send out mobile call sheets. Like this video and subscribe to our channel for past and future videos. And if you want, ring that bell icon. Good luck and do tech it up. All right, we'll see you guys on set. Go team. <laughs> Please cut that out. Please edit that out.